Um, any other topics anybody else wants to chime in on right now? Got Jordan? Um, yeah, uh, I had a question more about a bit of a long-term issue, actually, not necessarily related to the whole pandemic, uh, regarding House File 1138, uh, digital fair repair provided. It seems to currently be stuck in the, um, the House Committee for um, Consumer Protection, which, uh, interestingly enough, is run by the former owner of a car dealership. And they're uh, they're blocking uh, right to repair legislation. I thought it was stuck in. Yeah, I did see that bill was stuck. You know, that's Jordan. That's an interesting one because I hear a lot of chatter about it. I get a lot of letters about it, and I get a lot of you know um, concern about that issue. And so I was surprised when I did look it up and see that it was still in its first committee after Ways and Means. And it, did not move so I'm not sure what the what the momentum will be on that next session but I don't expect it's being coming up in the special session at all I know there's just a lot of uh, there's a lot of people coming to the Capitol about it last year and I was surprised that it didn't come before us at all and uh, seems to be like you said stuck I haven't looked into why um, I know there had been traveling hearings when we were still as a group going around they did, did take a bunch of legislators out to a facility in Bloomington to talk about it and unfortunately I had a hearing with Health and Human Services and I didn't make it to that one but I'm not sure what the prognosis will be for that bill moving <coughs> forward I know there's a lot of concern about it from um, industry I, I took the time to stop at a tractor uh, implement dealer and talk to the owner of that implement dealer just about that bill in specific because he had uh, brought it up at a chamber meeting I was at and I wanted to learn more about it and his concern was that for the tractors that he works on that his concern is is that if you give out the manual for that, you're basically going to show people how to circumvent the, uh, the, um, the, the manual to the point where you can uh, remove all of the uh, environmental uh, safeguards on a tractor. And the I was advantage is there was any language in this bill that made that legal. I was not aware not, that it, it was still. It wouldn't, yeah, so the, it wouldn't be legal to circumvent it, certainly. But of course, he was yeah. just pointing out to me that that's one of the downsides of it, and so. Well, people are I, already people are basically already able to do that. This legislation would not enable them to do that any more than it would. Well, that that's what he was just informing me and he was talking about it in those terms and he's just saying that if you do that you know then you're gonna have this going on so I mean I know there's other aspects where it's much simpler than that where people should be able to repair their computer laptop and not void their warranty I mean there's a lot of issues in the whole span of electronics well it's more than tools. that it's it's not just that people should be able to repair stuff without voiding their warranty it's that people should be able to repair stuff and people should be able to replace a part and not have the computer shut off because it detects that the that this because this part happens to be serialized so that there's a, a, a number in, encoded in like a charging chip for instance and you can't replace it because if the if it's not the exact same number as was originally put in the device, the device will basically just not work. It will refuse to work because it sees, oh, hey, you replaced this, so we're going to just not allow this because you didn't go through our authorized service, which right. is basic, which is, again, limited by our own guidelines, by the manufacturer's guidelines to not actually provide service at all it, it's a whole complicated issue that it's 
manufacturers basically want to continue to monopolize the repair industry and they're right. locking independent people out of doing out of basically owning their own device right mm -hmm. and then it's a bill that um i see that and i see that 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 people's inability to work on their own uh equipment once they own it i mean i see that as a you know a, a problem and i did sign on as a co-author to that bill and i did i haven't that. seen i haven't seen that move but I'm just bringing up what my latest, you know, research was on it as far as larger implements, and and you know we have to have some discussion about that. So I'll be interested to hear more about the bill and learn more about it from folks like yourself that have come up face to face trying to work on their own computer, for instance, and why they should be able to and not have to send it in when they could do it themselves and do it at a fraction of the cost. So there's an issue there, sure, that we need to address so that people can take ownership of their own equipment and be able to fix it. And and, and the only downside or the side that I would want to protect would be making sure that the safeguards are there as far as larger implements or safety. That's the other thing is, you know, anything that you might do on not, not, not a computer, but in a, like a, tractor or something where if you change something to in the system that might deactivate a safety uh, switch or something that's a problem right. the big so one we want to make john sure deere, right john what's that? that the big one is john deere yeah john deere's been a major uh yeah anti right to repair lobbyist on this issue yeah. correct mm -hmm. and uh that was it was john deere that i was out to the implement dealership was a john deere it's not a John Deere, but it's got a new name now, I guess. But yeah, but when I'm looking at issues like this, I do like to understand in its broadest impact what, what it means. And I certainly want people to be able to fix devices that sh they should be able to fix. I'm not a repair person myself, but I have Nor am I. You know, family members are and, and friends of mine or and people on my staff at work, you know, and as a business owner, if I can fix something cheaper and do it ourselves and it's just as good, I want to be able to do that to like, the I degree just, that it's safe. I just stock shelves at my local Target. I don't I don't own any sort of repair business. I just happen to be really passionate about electronics. Very good, and thank you for bringing the issue up. And if you have any more tips or information that you want to share with me about the bill, I'd be happy to hear it. This is very interesting to me because I worked for IBM in global services for 34 years, and my customer was John Deere, full time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and, and just hearing this for the first time, my reaction is, um, I agree that people should be able to repair hardware that they've bought, but I think that should let the original manufacturer off the hook as far as warranty is concerned. Wow. Yeah. Once they, yeah, I guess it's, to me, it's, it's all relative to what the issue is to a certain degree. I mean, if you go into a John Deere tractor, that's a that's a spendy piece of equipment, and if you're going to mess around with it yourself at a certain point, you're voiding the warranty. I mean, it's the same in my business with some of the products I sell. I mean, simple as some of the flooring I sell. You take it from me and go to your house and start pounding it together, and you now are the installer. There's installation-related things that affect it, and there's no warranty on it product makes, that you it, have it makes sense not as for... not professionally installed so that's pretty simple and basic but it's a certain principle i guess it makes sense for manufacturers to not be uh enforced to uphold a warranty when uh people have uh modified it beyond the manufacturer's capability to uh fix it to their own specifications but the it's it's not really about the warranty it's about like it basically the idea is when you buy something you own it and it's not like if you go and like for instance if you disable the security features and you hurt yourself on a piece of equipment 
why should that be the manufacturer's responsibility? Like, you, you should be entirely liable for things that you do to yourself, right? For sure. Absolutely. Yes, except we live in a litigious society, and and once it goes to court, you know, there's, unfortunately, there's, uh, there's a lot of legal preambles and legal... Um, legal positions there so i understand i take your point though well we already know who has the good lawyers with you we do. that the device should not prohibit you from trying to operate it further once you've put in an oem part just detecting that it's not the right serial number anymore and then refusing to operate at all i think is wrong it should be able to try to operate right that's yeah that's pretty much the main thing Yes. May I? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Oh, 